Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. Each speaker gets only five minutes and 20 slides that auto advance every 15 seconds. So, um, without crying, a very special person in my life, and we didn't save him for last on purpose. I purposely did not do anything for this event other than help Dixie do whatever she needed me to do because I didn't want to weigh or try to sway someone to listen to this guy because I knew that five minutes magic will happen. Um, our last speaker tonight is very special to me. Uh, I came to New York um, by way of athletics and I ended up working at the New York Institute of Technology. Um, how many of you know the New York Institute of Technology? Um, we used to have jokes, NYIT, next year so I'll transfer. transfer. So, because <laughs> there was no technology, I want to be clear. But it was a great school. Uh, the reason I say it was a great school is at the ripe age of 22, they let me become a professor. That's a good school. <laughs> and the way that I became a professor was uh, very similar to what I do in entrepreneurialism, is I, said, I basically said to a professor, and he was, he was one of, like my mentor, um, I said, Professor Favell, I, I could probably do what you do maybe a little better. And he said, walked me down to the English department, introduced me to the dean of students, and NYT is really sophisticated that they put the communication, speech communications, uh, which is public speaking 105 in the English department, so that was confusing. And um, he introduced me to the dean of uh, the English department, who I still believe is there till this day, Dr. Brown. And Dr. Brown said, yeah, you could shadow me around because they don't do that. They don't let young professors just come into a college like that. And the week later, they said, Daniel, you still want to be a professor? I'm like, goldfish mode. Um, and they said, yeah, someone called in, one of our professors called in for speech 105, public speaking. You ever do that? And um, <laughs> so I got to teach a class. And I figured it was the one time class I'd go in. Long story short, a uh, professor actually passed away. And so um, through you know, someone else uh, passing on, I was able to pass on a tradition that I understood and, and a skill set that I understood very well. But like anything that I do entrepreneurialism wise or as an entrepreneur, I wanted to do it very different. And so I set out one goal, just like Gary said, you gotta have a goal, gotta have something to measure against. So it was very simple. Best professor, most popular professor at NYIT. That was it. And then I, then I started to teach and it started to work. And we started to have students that, um, my students not, first off I never took attendance. I didn't have to. Everybody showed up, am I right? Everybody showed up to my classes, sometimes they would want to bring a guest. And so it became this very weird thing. Uh, one, of our, one of our courses, during one of our courses, uh, we would separate, uh, two teams. One team was a persuasive speaking team. To, yeah, they had to use the techniques of persuasive speech, and the other was nonverbal. And the whole class, you'll probably remember this, the whole class was buy your professor lunch. And they had to go out and raise money for me. <laughs> and uh, I think it was Matt's class that one, they started walking into classrooms and saying, we got to buy our professor lunch. I'm going, I'm fired. Finally, it's going to no, happen. No, 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 no. We said it was a school project, yes. and that, that's how we got the money. One of them said, uh, uh, I've... I've got HIV, I'm like. <laughs> that was my group. Yes, here we go. But he, so it's so crazy. By the way, if you Google John Dano, my rank, my professor scores are very high. Um, it's an honor to actually see your students grow up. I, get, I have students that are business owners now, but Matt was one of my students in public speaking 105 in a class that I said we were gonna do it very, very different. And what I found fascinating is about a couple years ago, I found out that Matt really took what I said to heart and he did things very, very different. So it's an honor to bring Matt Wolf to the stage to give us our final inspiring inspiration. I'm gonna ask that you don't run out the door, but Matt, please come on up. Thank you, thank you. My name is Matt Wolf, I'm 23 years old. I was born and raised in Plainview, Long Island. I'm an electrical engineer, fitness motivator, I'm also a model, and I'm an entrepreneur. I'm going to talk to you today about what kind of got me into doing all these things. Uh, a couple things about my early life. I was into bowling, I was also into electronics, and unfortunately, food. The first picture, that's my senior year bowling picture. Second picture is 
my Christmas display. And the third picture was me eating 100 cheeseburgers at White Castle. Um, my father taught me how to bowl when I was two years old. Um, that escalated into 17 years of bowling. That's my senior year picture. I was the captain of the team and most valuable player. In the electronics phase of my interest, I started building models and I started, you know, building bigger models, and that turned into me synchronizing my Christmas display with music. Actually, that's the Newsday article that I was featured in after doing that whole display. Now here comes the weight problem. At 18 years old, I was over 250 pounds, and my doctor told me that if I didn't change my eating habits, that I'd face numerous health problems by the age of 30. My friends also bet me $1,000 that I could not lose 50 pounds within one year. Well, I did better than that. I lost over 70 pounds in the first year. This did not happen overnight. You know, it took a lot of time and a lot of patience for that to happen, which evolved into me taking my diet, my cardio, and weightlifting very seriously. A lot of people try to do these diets where they restrict themselves from eating, you know, like tons of bad food. They just, you know, try to be clean and everything. It doesn't necessarily work. You've got to have a little bit of everything, so there's a balance. Here's a picture of my bad food, my cheap meals, and there's my daily diet. Cardio is a big factor. It helps maintain healthy weight and metabolism. And what cardio does is it helps burn that fat, burn that extra calories, and you, it's, it's all three. You, you get the diet, you get the cardio, and you get the weightlifting. They're all together. Weightlifting, a lot of people are afraid about. They don't want to get too big. They're all shy about that. But what it does is it helps burn calories. It helps maintain and preserve lean muscle tissue. And at the same time, it improves your stamina. So if you have a very physical job, it can help you better yourself like that. So as I began uh, transforming my body, I started to get noticed by companies. I started getting endorsed by these supplement companies. And these companies helped me with my nutrition, my diet, cardio, weightlifting, stuff like that, which escalated into me getting into fashion modeling and fitness modeling. This is an evening where attire that I did uh, could be like a New Year's or a birthday party special event. This is a wedding catalog that I was featured in. And that is uh, one of the shots from beach attire. So I graduated in 2014 with a bachelor's in electrical engineering and met a lot of great people there. Uh, interesting fact, as Dano has mentioned before, I met this guy and I was really shy until he broke me out of my shell and said, highest energy wins. And since he said that, that's what I've been doing since that day. Currently, I'm an electrical engineer at North Atlantic Industries. We're a defense military contractor for the government. And we do a bunch of special uh, projects where we put our components into a bunch of military aircraft. I work in the IO section. And what we do is we build rugged embedded systems. And we have to meet uh, certain military requirements. It depends on weight, stuff like that. You know, we're going into planes. You can't be, you know, certain amounts of weights. Um, these are my success stories. This is my friend Sam. This was in three months. He lost over 35 pounds. Uh, very nice guy. Followed my, you know, comments and motivation. This is Carlos. He was a classmate at NYIT. He lost over 90 pounds in six months just for my uh, motivation and outlook. A lot of people ask me, you know, how do you do this? Well, first thing, you have to set goals. If you don't set goals, you know, you don't know what you're really chasing after. Then you make a plan. After the plan, you execute the plan. Then you evaluate your plan. And after that, you adjust. And then it repeats. You never want to, you never want to stop this cycle. If you stop the, sky, if you stop the cycle, everything, everything comes to a halt. You've got to keep growing. And you've got to keep learning. If, if, that, if you do not do that, you will not succeed. So what I've done with this is I've transitioned this into my own personal business and in my work. So I have my own website that was just launched about a month ago. It's called fitwolf.com. And I also started a business with a partner where we take smaller businesses and larger businesses and we help grow them through the means of social media. I want to get my master's again someday, but I'm not sure exactly what I want to get into because, as I said, my plan is constantly changing and it's constantly evolving. Um, I'm very lucky to have met a bunch of people that have helped me connect with other groups of people where I can help them excel. So what happens when you stick to your plan? Well, Zano said, highest energy wins, and anything could happen. And this is from my first photo shoot, and this is my magazine cover. Thank you. So, so Daniel son, when teacher becomes student. Um, so, <laughs> pretty, pretty amazing, yes? Yeah. So, uh, you know what? 
you know, we talk about length of time when someone transitions their body and does this thing. You've done it for so long now. So what do you think keep, keeps the weight off and just keeps you so motivated? It's the consistency. And like I said before, you, once you have this plan, you got to constantly grow and you got to constantly learn. Once you stop doing either of the two, then what, what are you doing? You're just going to stay in one spot and not do anything? You know, I try to learn something new each day, whether it be for my peers, colleagues, or other people out there. Like, I'm always, my mind's always going. I can't even fall asleep at night. I didn't get any sleep last night because I'm just like, what should I learn tomorrow? What should I do tomorrow? Who should I talk to? You got to keep expanding your network. And if you're not doing that, then you know, what, you know, you're missing out on those opportunities because something could come across that if someone wasn't thinking about and they were just staying right there, it could pass them right by. Give them a round of applause. Stay here. All the speakers, come on up.